Ghosts and the paranormal have been a few of the most controversial topics for centuries. Their existence has caused debates between believers, skeptics, hunters, and religion. But the question is, how many people out there actually believe in ghosts? Uh, do I believe in ghosts? Uh, actually, I am a very superstitious person, so yes, I do believe in ghosts. I think they uh, do exist, yeah. No, I do not believe in ghosts. I believe there's something out there, yeah. I sort of like psychologically do. Yeah. Like, so it's always in the back of my mind. Like I would, I would sort of like realistically not. Damn, I do not extremely believe. Like I would say like, just over the fence believe. If that makes sense. When I was younger, I did believe in ghosts, but as I grow older, like there's no reason to believe in them. Cause it takes energy to become something. That energy, where do you where do you get that energy from? Why, uh, I don't know, I guess it's from how I was raised. I guess it mostly comes from my tradition as uh, growing up as a kid because um, I guess, oh, well, yeah. It's mostly from where I grew up from, yeah. I think supernatural is something people, it's, it's, a, it's a belief. You know, just like God. Like, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, but it's because of my opinion. People believe in ghosts because something might have happened or maybe some, like some, you know, they've heard something or, or seen something. And I think supernatural, uh, there are some things that are supernatural, but I'm not sure about ghosts. I do believe there's an afterlife. I do believe in heaven. Uh, and I do believe there is a hell. I spoke to Vicky Hones, a strong believer in ghosts, and she has shared one of her ghost experiences with us. When I was about four at my great aunt's house, and I looked up and there was a lady in the doorway all dressed in black with a wrinkled face. And when she saw me looking at her, she walked off and I could hear the rustle of her dress and then my great aunt came in and said are you okay and I presumed she saw her and I said oh have we got visitors and she said no so I explained what I'd seen and she said oh that was Uncle Bill's mum her husband and then when my dad came to pick me up I said oh Uncle Bill's mum came to visit and he said oh but she was dead before you were born here we are able to see what people think ghost hunters look like and what they do Ghost hunters, damn, there's guys that walk in with like pest control uniforms and big vacuums. I know those, those typical like guys with like, you know, Mythbusters and stuff like walking into like dark places at night. I guess what you see in those Ghostbusters movies and everything, like, you know, they've got those kind of guns, like, you know, those specific guns, like, you know, lasers and everything that can only catch those ghosts and everything, like, not normal kind of stuff, yeah. Ghost hunters, um, as a kid, I probably imagined they look like Ghostbusters, but, uh, as I'm older now, of course, um, I would think they look more practical and more, like, um, utilitarian. Regular people. Just regular people. No, not like that Ghostbuster movie that I watched. It's pretty <laughs> terrible. Pretty terrible. <laughs> They're just normal people, normal just trying people. to find out what's, what's, I don't know, weird, I guess. Um... This normal person, but a bunch of gear with them, like those, like those speakers that like convert like radiation sounds into like words, and like maybe cameras, some night goggles. This, it's a normal person, but just a lot of equipment. There isn't a conclusive way that people think ghost hunters look like and what they do. Most people think that they come straight out of the Ghostbusters movie. This is Mark Wolbank. He's a lead investigator with Haunted Auckland. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to. Uh look into the, the mysterious world out there and uh, normality became boring and so I started asking questions about everything in life and uh, had a, a mad interest in ghosts and monsters and UFOs and that kind of thing so I just set out to go and find some answers for myself. I would like to consider myself as an investigator, someone who uh, goes into the field and uh, with the rest of the team collects uh, data and, and recordings and then we go back home and review hours after hours of recordings of audio and video. Very difficult to convince me, but one of the ones that we never found any, a full explanation for um, that we could prove, um, we were at a, um, a private investigation at a home um, where people had been having paranormal experiences and um, there was a lot of, um, most of the team was in one bedroom where someone had been having experiences and, and I wasn't sitting in the lounge 
watching the um, the feeds on the video monitor. Um, so I, I knew they, that there was something happening in the in the room with the people because they were sort of spending a lot of time in the room. And uh, I had a recorder in there, so I was recording all of the audio that was occurring in that room. And what it turned out is there was a, a conversation happening with something that was answering by tapping on the wall. And so uh, people in the room would ask a question and they would get a tap. Um, and it wasn't just random tapping, it was intelligent. It spelled out a name. They went through the alphabet. A, B, C, sort of asking it to tap when it got to the letters. And they got it to sp spell out the name Jonathan Lockley. My first hunt with Haunted Auckland was at Puhoi Centennial Hall. So Puhoi is a small town um, just further up north. And um, it was only a small little hall, a lot smaller than the room that we're in now. Um, and the theory was was that there was a janitor who liked the place so much that he hung around. Um, of course, not a lot happened that night, but one of the, the most interesting things that happened was that all of the lights turned off um, all at once and the circuit board had been switched off. So no one else had done that while we were there. Um, it could have been possible that it was tripped, but um, yeah, it was interesting and it's exciting on, on your first investigation, you know, it just it develops that sort of interest for it. Um, there aren't really any equipment that definitely uh, track or, or communicate with the paranormal. Um, usually what we would use is something that collects data, something like a video camera or an audio recorder. Um, if we, if we base, say for example, if a ghost can move something or, or can make a noise or can change temperature, we like to believe that maybe it's made up of some sort of energy. So usually devices that might um, detect energy, say for example EMF meters that detect electromagnetic fields, um, or uh, digital thermometers that detect change in temperature or data loggers even, um, that will um, collect data from a, a long period of time while you're in the in the room. So all things that will collect data and record and then we can go back and review. My personal belief is that um, the paranormal is a reaction the human mind has to certain conditions and certain stimulus. So if you believe that a location is haunted then potentially you will experience paranormal activity there. There's certain types of places that come up quite often as being haunted. Um, when you look at places like jails and hospitals, asylums, schools, um, there's a certain type of architecture to them, um, sort of uh, institutional architecture I like to call it, where they have big long corridors and lots of doors and there's that type of sort of setup seems to trigger something within people to make them feel spooked out. This is what some of the people that were interviewed think about what ghost hunters are like. Uh, well, as I said, I do believe in ghosts, but I think ghost hunters are a bit redundant, and so are exorcists. I think they're, you know, kind of redundant in our society, but yeah. Um, it can be abused in many ways for money making, and like, people can target the vulnerable who have, like, who believe in ghosts a lot. And yeah, that's what I think about them. They're not worthy. They're just wasting your money on them. We hear that all the time. We hear that all the time. And it usually comes from people that have never done this, that have never actually got off their couch or stepped away from their computer to go out and spend time in a haunted location or an allegedly haunted location. Um, it's only when you go out and start spending time in these places that you start to feel what other people are experiencing and you start to maybe see what other people are seeing. Um, I've seen enough now to sort of um, corroborate what other people have seen. Um, We're not going to sit here and tell you that ghosts do or don't exist. That's not for us to say. Um, it's all part of our journey but it's not, you know, for you, it's, it's for you to experience yourself, it's for you to make your own decisions and come up with your own answers. Um, we can't tell you that ghosts still don't exist.